I'm not sure where my passion for insects come from because no one in my family is really that keen on the outdoors. Uh, but I, during my childhood, I always seemed to have an insect in my hands and I was always just looking around for them. And then when I was eight, I got a microscope uh, as a Christmas present and I put a fly uh, under the microscope and I just fell in love with how something so small and neglected can be so complex and beautiful. And since then, I've collected insects and um, study them. My PhD is looking at how butterflies adapt to climate um, and in particular in this group of butterflies called Heliconius I'm looking at uh, how some species have been able to go up the Andes and live in a much cooler environment whereas others are in the Amazon basin where it's much hotter. So I'm looking at within species and across species differences in how they adapt. Scientists have been desperately trying to predict how different species will respond to climate change and my PhD is trying to shed light on the genetics underlying their responses to different temperatures. Hopefully once we understand better the genetics that allow our species to adapt to a certain climate we will be able to better predict their responses to future warming up of the planet. What made me come to St. John's was mainly the research group with Chris Jiggins uh, that studies butterfly genetics. Um, they're sort of world-renowned and I was just really interested in the projects that they were offering. So in Chris Jiggins' lab we study uh, butterflies from South America, a specific group called Heliconius. And even though they're studied in many labs across the world, what I really like about Chris Jiggins' lab is that He's always trying to connect the genetics underlying the butterfly with the environment it lives in. So we're interested in evolution and the evolution of diversity and, and of new species. And what we do is really try to integrate an understanding of how organisms evolve right through from changes in the DNA through to um, the appearance of the organisms, in this case butterflies, and then through to what happens in the wild and, and how these organisms behave. And so sort of trying to understand evolution right through from the genetics through to the ecology and the behaviour uh, in, in the rainforests. I have to go to South America uh, quite often and look at the environment that different populations live in and characterise it and also collect butterflies to be able to sequence them and study their genomes in depth back in Cambridge. In January 2017, a group of us went to Colombia and Ecuador to collect butterflies. We uh, go to sites where we know these butterflies are, and then we spend the day just chasing butterflies and then uh, preserving them in envelopes uh, or then sequencing them back in Cambridge. Mostly it's quite uh, sort of 19th century natural history. We just run after butterflies with a net, just like uh, Darwin's contemporaries, Henry Walter Bates did. Um, uh, so there's nothing very high-tech about it, but we did, we, there's this technique of waving a red rag and uh, I was very pleased that Gabby uh, got that on, on film successfully because sometimes people are rather sceptical skeptical about whether that works, but uh, I think the butterflies, well we know that they use colours to find their mates and so the movement and the colour, that combination is quite attractive and so you can draw them down from the from the forest, from the trees, uh, towards you by waving these coloured rags. But I was also interested in uh, characterising the thermal environment, the habitat that these butterflies inhabit. So we took temperature and humidity data loggers that record every hour the temperature and the humidity of a certain site. And I, we put them in the understory, so near the forest floor, but also above the canopy to really understand what kind of temperatures the butterflies are flying through in different habitats. So everyone thinks that working in the rainforest is really fun, and it is, and it's a beautiful place, and I really like being able to see uh, the butterflies I study in the wild. But at the same time, there's a lot of physical challenges to working in the rainforest, and it can get very tiring, the weather can be terrible. Uh, and we also work in very remote areas. There's also some issues with security in some countries. Um, for example, we were in Colombia in January uh, and we went to an area where people haven't been able to go for over 20 years because it was completely controlled um, by the paramilitary. But now with the peace process, uh, scientists are able to go back there. In particular, on this recent trip, we, we found this butterfly that was described nearly 20 years ago now and, and had not really been collected since. And so this was the, the first time we had an opportunity to go back and, and look for this species. And we, we did indeed find it there in the mountains. So that was exciting. Mm -hmm.